In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom email in Google Workspace. A personalized email address is one of the best ways to stand out to your customers, so let's jump right in. I'm here on the Google Workspace landing page, and the first thing I need to do is go to the pricing section. You may be tempted to click this get started button, but you don't wanna make that mistake because that's going to assume that you want the highest, most expensive plan. So do yourself a favor, save a headache, go to the pricing page first, Decide which plan you want. I recommend Business Starter for most people. Business Standard and Business Plus just give you more Google Drive storage and a couple other enterprise features, but I think Business Starter is what most people are looking for. So I'm gonna click Get Started on Business Starter. Now here you're gonna fill out some basic information like your business name and how many employees you have. Now I'm going to say just you, and even if you have multiple employees, I would just say just you right here, because I'm going to show you how to add additional users later on, and depending on how you answer this, it may tweak the setup process. I'm gonna click just you and click next, and then fill out my first name, last name, and the current email address is basically where you want Google to send information about Google Workspace. So you can't use an email address that is on your domain name because that's kind of like a black hole. You can think of this almost like a recovery email. So I've actually got a Gmail address for my business that I'm going to enter and this is where Google Workspace can send me account information. So now Google is asking, does your business have a domain? And a domain is basically the website address, like example.com. In my case, I have crailer.autos. So I would say, yes, I already have one I can use. If you click, no, I need one, Google will give you an opportunity to purchase a domain from Google Domains. And this is fine, they have competitive pricing. Or if you'd rather use a different registrar like Porkbun or GoDaddy, or you already have a domain at one of those places, you will click, yes, I have one I can use. So that's the correct answer for me. I'm going to input my domain name and click next. And Google's just gonna confirm that this is in fact the correct domain name, which it is, so I'll click next. Uh, now we have a decision to make on if we want Google to send an email to new workspace users with information, instructions about how they can get started. I don't really want this, I'm gonna say no thanks, but it's totally personal preference. If you click okay, it just means that Google's gonna send some emails to your users to help them get started. Now we've reached the point of creating our first custom email. The username you enter here is going to create an email address at yourdomain.com, and this is going to be the master email for Google Workspace. It's gonna be the super admin. So you could create this for yourself if you want to be the super admin, Admin, or if you want a dedicated email address to be the admin, maybe you would wanna put admin or web admin or info. It's totally up to you. I'm just gonna put Christian. So this is gonna create Christian at crailer.autos. And then I have to put in a password as well. I'm going to tell Google that I'm not a robot and agree and continue. Now, since it's a new account, Google may ask you for a text verification. Last time I stepped through this process, they did the same exact thing. So if they do that, just go ahead and put in a phone number and confirm the text code that it sends to you. Now we're being asked to agree to some terms of service. I'll click I understand. And here's where Google wants us to review the payment plan. And this is why I said to go to the pricing screen because if you just click that main get started button on the first page, it's gonna put you on the highest plan. Thankfully, this is the plan I want. I'll click next, and then I'll have to put in my address and payment information. I've inputted my payment information and I'll click agree and continue. And now I can click continue to set up and connect Google Workspace with my domain name. We've been taken to the admin console and this is where we can create users and manage everything, mess with settings and permissions for Google Workspace. So I'm going to click next. Google is gonna have all these pop-ups teaching you how Google Workspace works. Since this is a tutorial, I'm going to close this, but if you wanna read these pop-ups in your own time as you go through the setup, that's totally fine, but I'm just going to close that. And then this is really where we get to the setup process. This is where we're able to connect Google Workspace with our custom domain. They already have our domain here from earlier in the setup process. So I'm going to click 
protect. Now, depending on who you use for DNS management for your domain, this step is going to look a little different. I use Cloudflare, I've talked about it many times before on my channel. I highly recommend using Cloudflare for your domain. It's free to use, I've got a tutorial you can watch on setting that up. I'm going to assume that you're using Cloudflare and you already have it set up because that's gonna make the Google Workspace setup a lot easier. But if you're not using Cloudflare, this process may look a little bit different. So I'm gonna say I'm ready to protect my domain. And then this is gonna have us sign in with Cloudflare. And this is why it's so easy when you use Cloudflare, because I can click sign in to verify. And then I don't really have to do much with the DNS records. Once I've signed in with Cloudflare, there's a pop-up to authorize the DNS records to be added automatically. So you can see there's no having to copy any records or manually set anything up. I can just click authorize right here. Cloudflare is going to add that to my DNS records. And then Google is going to verify the domain, which may take about five minutes. You can leave this page open and it'll automatically redirect you when you're ready for the next step. But while you wait, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you know when I put out new videos. Now we've protected the domain and we've automatically been redirected back to the setup wizard. The next step gives us an opportunity to create additional users. So if it's just you and you're happy with that first email address you created, you can skip this step and move on to step three. But if you have other team members or you want additional emails, you can click create. And this is gonna give you the opportunity to add additional users. You can have up to 10 users during your 14 day trial. And you can also make aliases, which is essentially just a redirect. So you could have hello at yourdomain.com redirect to sales at yourdomain.com or whatever kind of redirect alias you want to set up. If we continue, I can say add another user. I'll add our other team member. And right here is where you can set up that alias if you'd like to. I'm not gonna make an alias though. I'll just save the user and then I will continue on to the next step. You can create as many users as you'd like during step number two, but if you miss a user or you have someone else you need to add later, you can easily do that. And I'll show you how to do that later in the video. Now we're ready to move on to activating Gmail. And this step is what's going to actually make the email addresses function. So if you're migrating from another email host, this is the step that's going to officially route your mail to Gmail. So keep that in mind as you activate it. This is essentially going to follow a similar process to what we did when we protected the domain name. So if you've got Cloudflare, it's a similar process, or if you had to do something else for a different DNS solution, it's gonna be the same idea. I'll click, I'm ready to activate Gmail, and I'll just be asked to sign in with my Cloudflare account. And then I can just authorize those DNS records, all the MX records. We don't even have to think about it. We can just click authorize. Google did the heavy lifting for us there. So guess what? We get to wait another five minutes for this to process and then Gmail will be activated. And that's it. Gmail is activated. It's all set up. You can go to Gmail in a new tab and access your new email. It's gonna ask you a series of questions on if you want smart features and if you want your data to be used for personalization. Once you do that, you are ready to access your email. Here it is, your custom Gmail address is ready to go. If I go to the test email that was sent from me, I could see it was sent to my pretty nice looking custom email. Once you have your nice professional looking email address, you can start sending marketing emails to your customers to increase revenue. But who wants to deal with the headache of trying to create a nice looking email? That's where Mailjet, the sponsor of today's video, can help. Mailjet is an easy to use email marketing platform for designing, sending, and monitoring emails. Mailjet's editor makes it easy to create engaging email campaigns, newsletters, and automated emails in minutes. There's no coding, everything is drag and drop, and you can take advantage of beautiful pre-designed templates to save you time. Mailjet has some amazing features like automated email workflows so you can engage your customers at just the right time without having to remember when to send emails. Mailjet also gives you a ton of statistics. You can track email performance in real time and get actionable insights to create more engaging campaigns. Mailjet is the best way to connect with customers, whether you're a solo 
entrepreneur or a team. Thanks to Mailjet for sponsoring this video. Head to mailjet.com slash made to try Mailjet for free today. Now I'd like to show you how you can migrate data from an old Gmail address to Google Workspace so you have all your old emails in your new inbox. In order to do this, in the Google Workspace admin panel, go to the menu and go where it says account and go to data migration. Now you can use this data migration tool to move data from other email hosts if you've already had a custom email address, but I'm specifically gonna show you how to migrate email from a personal Gmail account. I'll click set up data migration, and then for migration source, I'll click Gmail. But again, if you have another host, you can say other IMAP server. I'm just gonna do Gmail, scroll down and click start. And then you need to select the date range for emails that you want to pull over. Past one year is like the longest range that they give you in the dropdown, but I found that if you just say custom date, you can make it go really far back. You know, I can say 1989 and pull all the data over from there. I don't know that Gmail even existed in 1989, so that should do it. Under migration options, you can decide if you want to bring over deleted mail, junk mail, if you want to exclude any folders. I'm just going to leave everything default and click select users. Now we're able to add users to do the data migration, and this is specifically for moving data from personal Gmail accounts. So if you're pulling from different sources and you have a custom email inbox you wanna move data from for a specific user, you're gonna to have to step through this process multiple times. So when you're all wrapped up, you can click more and say exit migration, and then you can do that setup process again and select a new source. But while we're on the topic of personal Gmail accounts, I'm going to click add user and I'm going to enter the old Gmail that I want to pull data from. And then when I click authorize, it's just gonna ask me to sign in with that Gmail address. And it's gonna ask for permission to read the emails and pull it over to the new inbox. I'll just click continue here. And then we're gonna to have to sign in with our Google Workspace account, the new account that you want to move the data to. So I will select my email. And then we're back here, we can scroll down and we just need to specify which Google Workspace email the old data is being moved to. So as you start to type, you'll see the users pop up. This is going to my address, so I'll click me and click start. And as the migration is in progress, you'll see a status right here. It says initializing. You can leave this screen or you can add additional users and you will get email updates. So when the migration is done, you'll get a report in your new inbox showing you all the data that was moved over. The last thing I wanna show you is how you can add and manage users in Google Workspace. If you have new team members or maybe one has left and you need to manage your email addresses, you can go to the main menu and go under directory and users. On this screen, you're able to add a new user. You can enter their name, email address, and you can choose to set a password manually or just automatically generate a password and send that to them. Now back on the management screen, you have the ability to reset a password for a user. So if a team member says, hey, I'm locked out of my account, I can't remember my password, you can actually initialize that from the admin panel right here. And then of course, if you need to delete a user, you can go to more options and click delete user. Once you're finished setting up Google Workspace, you can take the next step in your marketing journey with Mailjet. Use that beautiful custom email address you just created to send email campaigns to customers. You can try Mailjet for free at mailjet.com slash made. And if you aren't using Cloudflare for your domain, I highly recommend setting that up. I've got a full tutorial on that here.